Greetings, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew, with me, your host, whoever the heck I am. Today I'm going to be enjoying Aurabelle, a Belgian-style ale by Great Divide Brewing out of Colorado. Um, Great Divide has a few very nice Belgian-style ales, including one of my all-time favorite, like, summer easy drinkers, uh, Colette. Love that. Uh, this is a Colette's a farmhouse ale, which I've gone into at length. Um, this is not a farmhouse. This is a Belgian style ale. And as such, I would expect it to be um, very almost sweet, um, better for cooler weather, uh, maybe higher proof. I haven't actually even checked what this one is, but I would guess it's in the, oh, yep, eight and a half percent higher proof. Um, yeah, that's a stiff one. Uh, and spiced. Uh, Belgian ales, you know, this is, so, I mean, this isn't, this isn't an Abbey ale, but it's going to be in a similar family or class to Abbey ales. Uh, so that's generally the characteristic, characteristics that I would, would expect from this. Sweetness, high proof, spice, definitely a cooler weather beer. With the sun shining outside, I need to finish these up before I... <laughs> before it gets too warm outside. Uh, but let's give this one a try. So it pours pale, what, straw maybe? Now the head is not the finest I've seen. Um, not, like, not, not like super tiny bubbles, uh, but there's a good variety in the bubbles. I smell um, like lemon juice, lemonade almost. That characteristic um, funkiness that you would expect from a Britannomyces yeast. <laughs> I seriously want a shirt that says Brett is my homeboy or something like that. Um, I love Britannomyces yeasts. Um, I know there's some discussion whether it's even a real thing, if it's at all different from uh, Saccharomyces. I can't remember all the yeast families, but. Um, it is, in general, it's a characteristic, a yeast considered characteristic of Belgian beers, and it is known to produce a funkiness. Uh, barnyard, skunk a few miles away, uh, wet shoes, that kind of thing. And you're thinking, what the heck? Yes, I'm certifiably insane. You know that, right? <laughs> those of you who know me know that, and those of you who haven't yet known me, We'll get to know that. I am certifiably insane. Um, but uh, maybe it's just, okay. So you all have to experience a lot of things. We, we all have to experience a lot of things in our life. We have to experience, um, you know, experiences, uh, scent, uh, you know, temperatures and, and, and weathers and flavors. And at some point I just kind of decided, and it was, Maybe I'm predisposed towards this. Maybe it was a conscious decision. At this point, it is a conscious decision. I will enjoy whatever it is I can enjoy. Um, not in a uh, hedonistic sense, but if I have to experience it and it is possible to enjoy it, I will try to enjoy it. So I enjoy the long rainy season in the Northwest. Um, I also enjoy the beautiful sun and the, the really nice summers in the Midwest. I enjoy the smell of skunks 10 miles away. It kind of reminds me of home in a way. Um, I enjoy the smell of a barnyard. I also don't enjoy the smell of a barnyard, right? So it's complicated. Maybe I'm predisposed to enjoy things. Uh, the number of people who like Belgian beers would seem to indicate that I'm not entirely um, alone in enjoying the funk that Britannomyces brings. So it might not be the same thing at all, but it is what it is. And that's my explanation for it. Let's get back into this. <laughs> Rabbit trails again. Hmm. Okay. Uh, pepper, like white pepper, um, which is a kind of a sharper scent and um, produces heat further back in the throat than black pepper. Um, that lemonade, the Britannomyces kind of uh, funk. Uh, I 
yeah, that's nice. Let's warm it up a little bit. Um, being higher proof, being Belgian style, once again, this can also benefit from being warmer. However, if you don't enjoy the flavor of a Belgian served room temperature or something or, or warmer, try it colder because uh, cooling kind of depresses the, the flavors, the ability of the flavors to interact with your taste buds. I'm not sure if it depresses your taste buds or depresses the flavors, but there's a reason why ice cream mix is so sweet, all right? By the time you, you freeze it and stick it in your mouth, it's palatable. If you drank just the mix, only a three-year-old would like it, or a ten-year-old. Um, <laughs> people who don't know what's good for them, right? Okay, uh, some grass, like green fields. A lot of good stuff. Um, there's some other fruits in there. Uh, so we have kind of the lemonade that's kind of the, it's not a, it's not a dominating scent, but it's perhaps the first scent you'll get. Um, but it's like a, a soft, like a mild lemonade. Low on the acidity. Yeah, that's quite nice. Well, that's a, now that we've tasted or smelled it, tasted it with our nose, let's smell it with our tongue. <laughs> Here. Yeah, uh, syrupy. The sweetness is, it's just, it's there. Which is typical of the category. Um, so sweetness, um, but it's that, that kind of funky, you know, there's that funkiness mixed in. Um, the, probably more the barnyard than the wet leather, but uh, yeah. Still getting a bit of the lemonade, but maybe more of an apple juice as well in the in the taste. Um, there's it's like there's two different layers to the finish as well. There's kind of the warming, classic Belgian thing that kind of coats your tongue and then warms your throat as you swallow it, and then there's a almost a kind of a watery, refreshing uh, note that that kind of goes over the top of that. Um, at the same time, it disappears then, and then you're just left with this nice kind of lingering um, mossiness, almost like a, a, a mossy flavor. I mean, yeah. So in, in in preparation for this channel, I had to eat all sorts of unspeakable things. I'm 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 avoiding putting off. I, I, I'm putting off the diaper. Um, but the moss, I had to get through that. The uh, shovelfuls of fresh dirt and aged dirt, like like old dirt. Um, don't ask, there is a difference. Um, you know, good apples and rotten apples. Um, tin can was really hard to chew. Um, I'm still kind of recovering from that and my dentist won't talk to me. Um, and I'm totally kidding, in case you weren't aware. Uh, <laughs> try not to pack too much education into this thing. But, uh, it's what the flavors remind me of. <laughs> it's a mossy flavor. I haven't had to eat moss. Just what I'd imagine that based on the smell it must taste like. I suppose from drinking beer I should know better. Or maybe that's the problem. <laughs> hmm. So this is a good spring beer. It tastes of living things, of, of growing things. I mean, it's got yeast in it, of course. It's full of living things. Millions and billions of them. Um, but it's kind of a, it's not, it's not like bright and, and, and explosively growing. It's just, it, it, it reminds me of, of uh, young fields in the spring. Um, whereas maybe a, a Bach might be more of a fall beer because it's more of a, I don't know. I think I should stop this because b before I go any further, because I'm making less and less sense and having a harder, harder time justifying to myself how I'm trying to explain it. Box are not for fall. They can be. 
I would have to thank Carter on this. But for whatever reason, this beer evokes to me a spring-like atmosphere. Yes, it's better for cooler weather, but not freezing weather. You would really want an actual trapeze beer or something like that for, well, among other types, for, for really cold winter weather. Um, but this is a nice balance that works well with the growth, the ideas of growing and green that you get in the spring. And, um, and yeah, I think it works well for that. Food-wise, uh, generally a Belgian will pair well with a decently rich meal in a celebratory, celebratory sense. It's not going to cut or counteract, it's just going to amp it up because it's such a rich flavor. There's, you know, the creaminess and the um, kind of the unctuousness um, in there. And so I'm not sure... It, it, it needs strong flavors to stand up to it. But it's not going to combat the strong flavors or counteract the strong flavors. Um, I mean, heck, you could probably try it with a pizza. I'd probably try it with a chicken pizza with a really nice cheese rather than a pepperoni pizza. Um, I'd pair this with roast beef. I would pair this with a mid-spring um, picnic. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's about right. But like a picnic on your grandpa's farm kind of thing. I think that would be the right, the right hit for this. If your grandpa wasn't like a, I don't know, a PBR or a Bud Light drinker or something. <laughs> but anyways, this has been Crazy Ramblings tangentially regarding Orabel by Great Divide. The beer is far better than my explanation of it. It is not my favorite of the Great Divide beers. Like I said, that's Colette. Colette is just... Um, but this is a good... A uh, lightened version or alternative to maybe a classic Belgian, which will definitely kick you in the pants. Um, not that it's a light beer. This isn't anyways. Um, so I'm Matthew. I've been chewing the brew. And I will catch y'all on the flip side.